In this podcast episode, Joe Rogan speaks with Christopher Dunn, an author known for his books on ancient civilizations. Dunn shares his fascination with the theories surrounding the Great Pyramid of Giza. He discusses the idea proposed by Peter Tompkins in his book Secrets of the Great Pyramid about whether the pyramid enshrines a lost science. Dunn's interest was sparked when he read about the work of William Flinders Petrie, who described the use of lathes, large coring drills, and circular saws in ancient Egypt. Dunn delves into his research on the core drill holes found in granite in Egypt, particularly focusing on the spiral grooves around the cores. He discovered that the penetration rate of the ancient drills was 500 times greater than modern diamond drills used for cutting granite. This led him to experiment with creating his own core using a copper tube and corundum grit. He also considered the possibility of heat being used to aid in the drilling process. The conversation then shifts to the intricately carved vases found in ancient Egypt, made from materials like granite and diorite. Dunn highlights the precision and symmetry of these vases, with some being within a hair's width of perfection. He mentions a specific vase called the spinner that exhibited remarkable concentricity and runout measurements, impressing him with its accuracy. The discussion touches on the construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza, with Dunn mentioning the debate surrounding the time it took to complete the structure. He notes the massive stones used in the pyramid, some weighing up to 70 tons, and the precision required in their placement. The drill holes in granite and the perfectly carved vases serve as examples of the advanced engineering skills present in ancient Egypt. Dunn emphasizes the importance of thorough research and experimentation in understanding ancient technologies. He recounts his visit to the Petrie Museum in London to examine a core drill sample and verify the presence of spiral grooves. He also discusses the challenges in measuring and analyzing the vases to determine their level of precision. The podcast delves into the mystery of how the ancient Egyptians achieved such remarkable feats of engineering with limited tools and resources. Dunn's hands-on approach to replicating ancient techniques sheds light on the possible methods used in creating the core drill holes and intricately carved vases. The discussion raises questions about the level of technological advancement in ancient civilizations and challenges conventional theories about their capabilities. Dunn explains that practical engineers and scientists aim to measure everything precisely, regardless of existing theories. They are open to exploring alternative methods of construction. On the other hand, archaeologists and Egyptologists believe that modern engineers should work under their guidance to ensure the accuracy of their findings. This divide creates a challenge in understanding the true origins of these ancient artifacts. The discussion delves into the conventional expl explanations for the construction of these artifacts, such as using copper tools and sand. However, Dunn points out the lack of evidence for copper drills or other tools that could have created the intricate designs found in the artifacts. He also mentions the reluctance of archaeologists to accept findings that challenge the established theories of ancient Egyptian technology. The conversation shifts to the discovery of iron artifacts in ancient Egypt, including an iron plate found in the Great Pyramid. Dunn explains that while iron was present in some artifacts, there is uncertainty about the smelting methods used by the ancient Egyptians. The mention of a meteoric iron dagger belonging to King Tutankhamun adds to the intrigue surrounding ancient metallurgy. Dunn then focuses on the precision and symmetry found in ancient Egyptian statues, particularly the faces of Ramses II. He describes how measurements taken by modern engineers reveal astonishing levels of accuracy in these sculptures, challenging the notion that they were created solely by hand. The discussion highlights the need for further research and advanced scanning techniques to fully understand the construction methods employed by the ancient Egyptians. The conversation transitions to the Great Pyramid, with Dunn proposing a theory that it served as a power plant or electron harvester. He explains that the design of the pyramid, including the king's chamber and the shafts leading to it, suggests a functional purpose beyond traditional burial chambers. He suggests that the shafts may have served as conduits for energy or information, rather than simply as portals to observe stars. 
Dunn also touches on the polished limestone surface of the Great Pyramid, noting its potential to collect and reflect light. He speculates that every part of the pyramid had a practical function, including the reflective properties of the outer surface. The discussion emphasizes the complexity and ingenuity of ancient Egyptian architecture and engineering. Dunn explains that the shafts in the Queen's Chamber were filled with chemicals that would mix and boil off hydrogen. These shafts were designed to maintain a specific head pressure to ensure a steady supply of chemicals. The hydrogen produced in the Queen's Chamber would then flow up through the Grand Gallery and into the King's Chamber. The King's Chamber, made of massive granite stones from 500 miles away, is believed to vibrate in sympathy with the Earth. Dunn suggests that the subterranean chamber housed a device that delivered thrusts and powers to vibrate the pyramid. This vibration, combined with the hydrogen flowing into the king's chamber, created a highly energized atmosphere. Dunn introduces the concept of earthquake lights, which are caused by the release of electrons from deep within the Earth's minerals. He discusses the work of a NASA physicist and his research on earthquake lights suggesting that positive charge carriers in igneous rock can be released when the rock is stressed, leading to the phenomenon of earthquake lights. Dunn combines Tesla technology with the NASA physicists' research to propose that the vibrations in the pyramid and the Earth's crust could potentially prevent earthquakes by releasing built-up pressure. He explains that the combination of electromagnetic and mechanical energy flowing through the Great Pyramid could have served as a power generation system. He describes the chambers within the pyramid as collecting microwave energy and vibrating with hydrogen, creating a reaction similar to a laser where photons are stimulated and emitted at the speed of light. The northern and southern shafts of the pyramid play different roles in channeling and manipulating the energy collected by the chambers. Dunn highlights the intricate design of the shafts, with bends and dimensions that suggest a deliberate effort to control and direct the energy flow. He also mentions the presence of a gold cap on the pyramid, which could have been used to conduct electricity due to gold's properties as a conductor. The guest discusses the possibility of restoring the Great Pyramid to its original state as a functioning power plant to test his theory. He emphasizes the need for thorough research and verification of the pyramid's systems and functions before attempting such a project. Dunn draws parallels between his theory and advanced technology observed in Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, UAPs. He speculates on the potential connection between the pyramid's energy generation capabilities and the advanced propulsion systems of UAPs, suggesting that both involve technology that appears magical or beyond current human understanding. The guest expresses a desire to explore the civilization or culture responsible for creating the Great Pyramid and learn more about their power sources and manufacturing processes. He reflects on the loss of knowledge and technology over time, such as the burning of the Library of Alexandria and the importance of preserving and understanding ancient achievements. Dunn also talks about his collaboration with physicist Dustin Carr, who created a nano guitar with strings that are only 100 atoms wide. They used a laser to play the guitar, demonstrating advanced technology and precision. The discussion then shifts to the concept of the Great Pyramid as a power plant, with the potential to tap into the Earth's energy by stimulating movement in the lithosphere. Dunn suggests that the other two pyramids near the Great Pyramid are connected and part of the same system, with similar functions. The conversation delves into the Marfa lights in Texas, which are believed to be caused by electrons from the Earth ionizing the air and creating a light show. Dunn highlights the significance of the F frequency, which is found in the Great Pyramid and human DNA. He also mentions a paper that challenges the idea of industrial activity during the Ice Age, presenting evidence of lead pollution in Greenland ice dating back 149,000 years. Dunn addresses the debate around the sea drilling method used in archaeological research, mentioning a paper by Scientists Against Myth that criticized his methods. He explains the limitations of using 2D photographs to analyze 3D objects like cones, which can lead to distorted evidence. He emphasizes the importance of thorough scientific investigation 
and the falsifiability of theories to ensure accurate conclusions. The discussion then touches on the possibility of animal agriculture at Gobekli Tepe, suggesting that the people living there may have fed their animals with wild plants rather than traditional plant agriculture. Dunn reflects on the mysteries and questions surrounding ancient civilizations and the need for continued exploration and research in the field.